All right, we welcome you again to Bible College tonight. This is uh, this is lesson uh, number two and uh, part two of the book of Romans. And uh, we're glad to be here tonight. <laughs> I want to say uh, what a joy it is to be in Bible College. We appreciate uh, those that are taking classes. Appreciate our satellite schools in Stanford, Nebraska. Also in Guyana, South America. And uh, I appreciate the, uh, the Bible College there in Caneville, Guyana. Amen. And thank God for that. And the New Testament Baptist Church there in Pastor Ram. And what a great job they're doing there. And uh, you students are just a blessing to us. We thank the Lord for you. And I want to take just a moment and thank uh, again uh, Josh Walker and uh, Elijah Dow for the work that they're doing uh, for the school there in Stanford. And uh, I'm not going to thank any of you because y'all don't do anything, do you? Amen. You do. You do a lot. You show up to class. You're faithful. We thank the Lord for you uh, that are here. And uh, I love to kid and carry on. And sometimes I get in trouble. Brother Tony was talking about, have you ever opened your mouth just kidding and you stick your foot in your mouth? Well, I've been known to do that. Amen. I called out a man and his wife one time for moving. And uh, I was just kidding. I didn't know there was anything going on, and they were literally mad at someone. And I called them out from the pulpit. I just said, and they're, they're, they're so-and-so, and they've moved over here. They must be mad. Amen. And lo and behold, they were. <laughs> Amen. And boy, I tell you what, you can hurt, you, you yeah. can stick your foot yes. in your mouth. But you know what? Uh, God has a, has a sense of humor, too. Right. Yeah. And uh, you don't come in God's house and do stuff and get away with it. Amen. Right. So we best love one another. The Bible Amen. says that. Amen. Sometimes uh, the Holy Spirit of God uh, speaks to hearts. Amen. And uh, we may be just kidding, but God's not. Amen. Right. And he's not kidding about that. But it's good to be here tonight. Uh, I do appreciate you. Let's look at Romans chapter number 10. And boy, what a great, great lesson we just enjoyed in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. I appreciate uh, Brother Tony Millay teaching tonight. And he made a statement as he was going out that uh, Romans and 1 Corinthians just, just like a hand and a glove, and they're, they're just wonderful. And uh, the same uh, human writer, uh, but the same uh, spiritual author, the Holy Ghost of God and God Almighty. Uh, not, let's get started tonight. Romans chapter 10, turn there in your Bible. <laughs> the theme of chapter number 10 is salvation. Mm -hmm. Is salvation. And it deals actually with the Jews' failure to receive the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I, that's a sad, sad story. Mm -hmm. And it's even sad today that a multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision mm -hmm. and reject the gospel of Christ. I hope that you're witnessing to people. I hope that you give tracts. I hope you carry gospel tracts and uh, you Bethel people you need to carry gospel tracts and you need to give them out everywhere you go go to Walmart you're checking out you've got a captive person there uh, don't go through that self checkout that that eliminates jobs and and you're not smart enough to check yourself out amen uh, you'll mess up and you'll have to nine times out of ten you have to mess, you'll mess up come on now come on now be honest and uh, you'll have to call somebody over there anyway so you might as well just stand in line and it's a sad day that you have to stand in line amen but it is, and just stand in line because there's an opportunity waiting you at that cash register. And you don't know who you're going to get. And she may be the slowest or he may be the slowest uh, cashier, but I want to tell you, give them a track. Amen. Invite them to the house of God. I was in Walmart yesterday and, uh, and the cashier, and I gave her a gospel track and Come to find out, she says, I see your buses go by every Sunday. Yeah. And I said, well, why don't you get on one every Sunday? You see them go by, amen. And, uh, but she sends her kids, but, you know, and I didn't know this mother. So you don't never know. But I gave her a gospel track. Yeah. And I think that we need to be more about that because people need the Lord. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, but tonight I'm going to look and I'm going to see about the Jews' failure. And uh, then we're going to see also, again, the sovereignty of God, again, we're going to look at that a little bit, and the responsibility of man. Now, man is not going to stand before God and point a bony finger to God and blame God one day for his lost condition. I don't think anybody will stand before God and take their hand and point at him and put the blame on him. Right, right. 
when it's all said and done, the books are open, they're going to they're gonna be judged according to the works. Yeah. It's going to be a sad day. Yeah. Thank God I'm not judged according to my works. Amen. I am, amen, saved tonight by the blood amen. of Jesus. Amen. The gospel, let me just say this, is available to all. It's available to whosoever will. It is approachable by anyone and everyone, and there is no animosity to the gospel. Understand that this evening. I am not a Calvinist. I believe in predestination. I think God knows. But I think He gave us the free will to choose. He's such an awesome God. And by the way, the word awesome is a good term to call our God because no one else is. A prince is not awesome. Preach, brother. Amen. He was a drug addict. Amen. And I know that offends a lot of people, hurts a lot of people's feelings, but yeah. I'm going to tell you, Elvis was not the king. No. Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hank Williams was not the, the greatest, no. whatever it was. Amen. And, and, my, and he was a popular singer. Elvis was a popular singer. Prince was a popular singer. But none of them were kings. None of them should be worshipped. Right. There's only one that's Amen. deep worship and praise. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to tell you tonight, I'm glad I'm saved this evening. There are three terms that I want to give you uh, the definition for tonight as we begin our study. First of all, faith. And I want to just say it this way. Faith is to persuade, to draw towards anything, to, to, to conciliate, to believe, to obey. In theology, it is the assent of the mind or understanding to the truth of what God has revealed. It's a simple belief in the Scripture. I'm glad that I believe it is, as Robert Anderson would say, kiver to kiver. Amen. That's cover to cover to some of you yeah. who don't understand uh, that kind of talk, amen. But Rob would say, kiver to kiver, amen. I don't know where he got that from. Probably his granny or Daniel Boone or somebody. I mean, I don't know, hallelujah. But kiver to kiver means cover to cover. And I believe it all, don't you? Amen. Have no problem with the Word of God. I have no problem. I have a problem with somebody that tries to correct it. Right. right. Amen. Right. Amen. I don't need a, a Greek, and I, I believe in studying the Greek language. Sure. I love to, to wordsmith, but I'm going to tell you, I don't need no Hebrew teacher. I don't need no Greek teacher. I've got the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Ghost of God, and He'll help us Amen. to understand sure. right. as we study, and I'm thankful for that. And it's by faith. I believe the Scriptures, amen, of, of, of the being and perfections of God and the existence, the character, and the doctrines of Christ. I believe it is founded on the testimony of those writers, those 40 different writers of this holy book. The, this theological faith is called historical or speculative faith. So, I have no problem in faith. I love the definition of faith as it is laid out in this lesson. Second word, a term that I want to give you tonight is the word gospel. It is the history of the birth, life, the actions, the death, the resurrection, the bodily ascension. Do you believe Jesus rose yes. from the grave? Amen. Amen. The same body that was dead on the cross, arose from the tomb, brother. Arm. I want to preach right there. Glory Amen. to God. That is the gospel, friend. Amen. It's not, oh, not just only that Jesus came and died, but thank God He arose from Amen. the grave. Amen. That almost has a little preach on it tonight. Amen. I'd like to preach that. Amen. I thank God. The history of the birth, the life, the actions, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the doctrines of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Or it could be determined as a revelation of the grace of God to fallen man through the mediator who is Jesus. And it could include the character, the actions, and the doctrines of Christ with the whole scheme of salvation as revealed by Christ and the apostles. Amen. So that is a big long definition of the gospel and faith. And there's one more that I want to give you tonight, and it is the word gainsaying. That means to speak against. It means to contradict. It means to deny. It means to oppose. So remember these three terms as we go into our study tonight. 
First of all, I wanted you to notice with me quickly tonight the availability of the gospel. In verse number one, I see the concern of the saints. The Bible says this in Romans 10 and verse number one. Brethren, my, here's Paul again. Who's he talking to? Well, he must not be talking to any ladies because he said brethren. It's a generic term. It means save people. Amen? But he is writing. He is writing to who? Who's Paul writing to? The saved people. Mm -hmm. But he's writing to who? Rome. Rome. Yeah. Where, where at it, Rome? He's, he's talking to the brethren. Mm -hmm. And he's wrote to the brethren. But let me just say this. It applies to you ladies today as well. Right. He said brethren. He said, I want you to know something. And I want you to get this. He said, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, and it's simple, one, two, three, four, five words, that they might be saved. Right. And I want to tell you that should be the theme of every single one of us when we think of our blessed land that we love. Yeah. Brother James, it should be the prayer that James Baidu has about Ghana, West Africa. Can I get an amen? amen. That they might be be saved. There is a possibility of them being saved tonight. Amen? Isn't it good to know that? Thank God. There's still hope. Amen. Amen. Some of you are looking like there's no hope. Well, there's no hope in the Pope. I, I didn't mean to say that tonight, but I said it anyway. There is no hope in the Pope. There is no hope in this preacher. Right. There's no hope in Brother Tony. There's no hope in Brother Bedu. But I can tell you and I can point you to the one right. where there is hope. Yeah. And it's not a it's not a wishy-washy hope, but it's a no so hope tonight. Yeah. Brother Kent, it is preachy of me. Yeah, so good. Hey, Amen. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Brethren, that's what he said. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Notice, can I say it this way? The gospel is still available. Amen. Yes. And it is today. It will continue to be as long as there are saints with a burden and a desire to pray for sinners to be saved and the message of God is shared. The greatest problem the sinner has today is this. And by the way, the greatest problem that the church has today is this also. Not only the sin. Did you know sinners are not what's the problem in the churches? But let me just define what the greatest problem that the sinner has and also the greatest problem that the church has is one in the same, Brother Tony. It is a casual Christianity. Man. Are you listening to me tonight? I want to tell you, glory to God, we need to get on fire for God. Right. I'm tired of, of, of a bit of just this 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 sense of, of, of just being mellow, amen, about my salvation. I want to tell you tonight, thank God that Jesus died for me. Right. Yeah. Thank God He put us here with a calling of God upon our life. We should be on fire for God. We should lift up our voices in this day and hour in which we live. You say, well, preacher, it's probably too late, and, and we're seeing the days like Jeremiah. Well, I wish to the Lord that there'd be some Jeremiah's in the day that we have and yeah, they'd be yeah. weeping and crying and praying and preaching with power. We need the presence of God. That's what we need in America. We need some yeah. people to have an only Holy Ghost unction yeah. of God. Yeah. Once again get filled with the Spirit of God and the power of Almighty God. Yeah. That's what's lacking. Right. That's what we need today. Right. By the way, that wasn't in the notes. I'm just giving you that. Amen. It felt good. Free of charge. Amen. Free of charge. Yeah. The sinner's greatest problem. The greatest problem the sinner has today is the casual Christian. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because when that sinner sees the casual Christian, they can look at them and say, well, you know what? If that's Christianity, I'm as good as they are. I'm as on fire as they are. I'm just as well off as they are. I want to tell you, glory to God, we need to not be casual in our Christian faith. Amen. We need to be stirred up and moving for God and, and having a desire that people would be saved. Amen. Amen. There's an illustration. A man by the name of William Booth. Anybody ever heard of him? Yes. Yeah. He had an army. Salvation. The Salvation Army, yeah. And William Booth, he had a, one of his men 
I, when one of William Booth's men could see no results in the salvations of souls, he sent Booth, William Booth, a telegram asking for instruction what to do. Booth's reply back was simple. It was two words. Try tears. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you tonight, I wonder if it would help us tonight. If we were to, to cry out to God right. and get serious about it, I ask myself a question. How long has it been since I've been broken enough to shed, yeah. to shed tears of, of, of weeping over the lost condition Man. of our families, right. our homes, our, our churches? It breaks my heart to see where we are in our nation. And here it is. William Booth said, try tears. Paul knew that Israel had failed to understand God's true nature. God, by the way, God is holy. God is righteous. And you know what? They, they failed to understand that. And they failed to understand what man's true nature was as well. His humanity. Our humanity is unrighteous. Where God is righteousness, we are unrighteous. The Bible says all our righteousness are as filthy rags. But you know what? They failed to recognize that God had true love for them. In that, that He sent His only begotten Son who died for their sins, who gave Himself and paid their price, and yet they rejected Jesus. It's mind-boggling. They failed. They failed to understand. And by the way, our nation has failed to understand as well. Right. Yes. We're living in perilous times. And you know what the problem is? It's not the political problem. That's, that's, that's a secondary issue. It's not the financial circumstances. It's not the problem in America. I'm telling you tonight, America is dying because America has rejected and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just being honest. That's where we are. Right. And I've not come tonight to preach about America or politics or any of that stuff. But we are in a mess. And it's not because of two front runners in the political arena. It's not. And by the way, let me just assure you, one of the two of them, Lord willing, unless something happens, probably one of those two will be elected. But I'm telling you, it don't affect me not one iota because I'm still saved. And I'm going to yeah. keep serving. And I have no place to back down. I have no place to stop. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, glory to God. Yeah. We need to get excited. Right. And we need not to be discouraged because of that. Amen. And if you let it, it will bring you down. But let me tell you something, buddy. God is sovereign. Yeah. Believe it or not, God's sovereign. Now, notice the concern of the saints. But notice the callousness of the sinner in verse number 2. Paul said this, for I bear them record that they have a, a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Mm. Now, here is the earnestness. They have a zeal of God. Mm. You know what? The Jews were notoriously religious. Yeah. They really were. Yeah. And they had a great zeal for God. Yet, there was nothing, it was nothing more than simple religion. And that's what it was. Right. A lot of people are zealous for God today, but they're just going through the motions. Yeah. They're dead, and they don't know it. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. I refuse to have a part in dead religion. Amen. I like something lively. I like something that's got the touch of God on it. Amen. When somebody sings, I, I, you say, preacher, you're going on feelings now, emotions. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm telling you there's a difference between emotion and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 And a lot of people can sing and bring tears and emotions. A lot of people can come and pull your heartstrings with sad little stories. But I'm telling you, I want somebody to preach to me. I want somebody to sing. And, and if they're singing and they're hooked up, you all know what hooked up means yeah. in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I mean to tell you, somebody that's got a touch of God on them. That's what I want. Amen. amen. I like it. Amen. I don't care if they do leave Northwood. I hope and pray those people that leave there don't show up here. You know why? Because glory to God, I like their preacher. I like what he stands for. Thank God for a man of God that will stick by the stuff, amen, in this wicked hour in which amen. we leave. Amen. amen. I appreciate that. But, you know, a lot of people, they, they are zealous for God. But actually, they're just going through the motions. You know, they're just going through the motions. I, I, a choir can be uh, har, 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 harmonetically. Is that a word? Close. Sounds good, don't no. yeah. you? It's close. Thank you, Brother Walker. Well, give me the word. Come on. Harmonetic. Harmonious. Harmonious. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody look. 
Look that other word up and see if it's a real word. If it's not, write it in the dictionary, amen? Yeah. And, and tell the dictionary to accept it, amen? We'll give a definition for it. But, but a choir can sing in perfect harmony. And they can hit every note just yeah. perfectly. And I'm telling you, it'll be as dead. I mean twice dead. It'll be dead as, as, that, as that possum you run over three weeks ago yeah. that's still laying yeah. on the side of the road. Are you listening to me? But I tell you, a little old choir that have a touch of God on them and don't know nothing to get the glory can't yeah. help it. I'm telling you this evening, yeah. glory to God, there's a difference. And I wouldn't trade that one little choir for the Metropolitan Opera. Amen. Uh, I wouldn't. Amen. Because the difference is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I like that. You can have zeal yeah. minus the Spirit of God and yeah. you've got nothing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Said there was two young boys down at the fish pond. One of them called a small turtle. And you know how little boys are. They, one of them took his pocket knife out. And, and um, it was probably this one. And it's got a little Jesus fish on it. And took that knife out. And you know what he did? He took that turtle... And he cut that turtle's legs off. Mm. Amen. Well, that's interesting, ain't it? No, he cut the turtle's head off. I'm telling it wrong. I didn't, he didn't cut the legs off. Let me back up. He cut the, his head off. And that, that turtle, that turtle, I mean, the blood was squirting everywhere. And you can imagine that in your mind. But that turtle's legs was still moving. And the one other little boy looked at him and said, look at that. He's dead and don't even know it. And that's what a lot of these churches are. They're dead. They're moving. But they don't even know that they're dead. I want to tell you, glory to God, I want to be around the things of God. I want the power of God. I want the presence of God. I want to come in and have a saturated service with the Holy Ghost of God. Boy, that's what we need in the hour. Some people look at me kind of weird and kind of scared when you get up there preaching like that, especially them churches that ain't used to that kind of stuff. But I tell you, once they experience it, it's a different thing. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Earnestness, but they were empty. You see, they had an earnestness, Brother Baidu, but they also had an emptiness. The Bible says in that verse, not according to knowledge. They, there was an emptiness. And let me just say it, if there's no personal relationship with Christ, if there's no knowledge of Him, then all that is left is an empty religion that can never save and never satisfy. Oh, I tell you, glory to God, I'm glad tonight that I'm satisfied in Jesus. Amen. And let me just say it this way, there was an emptiness in man since the fall in the garden. Notice the conclusion of salvation in verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now let me give you four important things about faith in these verses that enables anyone to enter into a personal relationship with Christ. First of all, Faith is accomplished. The end, meaning the limit, the conclusion, the termination, the place where the thing stops. You see, Christ is the end. Oh, my soul. I'm telling you that'll preach, son. Yeah. Glory to God. Ooh, I love it. But He's also the beginning as well. Yeah. But I want to tell you, in this thing called salvation, when you come to the last stop, that... that yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. When the train goes to the last station yeah. and that conductor says, everybody off, this is the end of the line. Can I tell you, glory to God, at the end of the line of salvation, there is the man, Christ Jesus the Lord. Yeah. I'm thankful, glory to God, Brother Tony, that he is the end. Because if they would be something else at the end other than him, right. it would be something different. Right. But it is Jesus Christ. He is the end, meaning the conclusion, the termination, the place where it all, that's the bottom line. Yeah, man. It's Christ. Man. Notice something else. Faith is accessible. Notice what the Bible says. Every, in verse 4, to everyone that what? Believe. To everyone that believeth. Mm -hmm. You see, 
you want to access salvation, then you have to believe. Right. Faith is accessible to all who will listen and submit themselves to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't it good tonight to know that there is a way in? Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I was so far way out. Sure. Yep. Boy, you know, you, 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 may, you may, some of you may think, if you knew me back then, you think that boy got two way out for God, but I serve a big God. Yeah. And He showed me the way. Amen. It's accessible. And it's by believing. Mm -hmm. The third thing is faith is for all. Notice what the Bible says to everyone <laughs> that believeth. So it's to everyone that believeth. God never turns away anyone who will receive the gospel. What about murder? You think a murderer could be saved? <laughs> Paul was a murderer. Moses was a murderer. Look what God did for me. I'm thankful. Glory to God. Amen. Boy, I, I, I want to run a rabbit. Courtney won't let me. Amen. She, she said, no rabbits tonight, please. Faith is for all. Faith is accountable. Notice what the Bible says in verse number, number 3 have not submitted themselves. Mm. You see, if you don't submit yourself, right. you're not going to be saved. That's right. right. Amen. Only one way in. Yeah. <laughs> and it's His way. Yes, sir. You see, since people are ignorant of God's way of salvation, they depend upon their works yep. or by keeping the law or some other means of their righteousness. When I was working, I, I had a wonderful job. I, 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 I made peanuts. That was my pay. And actually, I ate peanuts. That was my bonus. Yeah. And, and I worked for peanuts. That was my pay. And I sold peanuts during the day. Amen. I, it was my life. Amen. Peanuts and uh, crackers and cookies and candy and honey buns. Man, I loved it. And uh, it shows. Um, but for those years, I, I met a lot of people. And I'll never forget, there was one guy that I met at a, at a store here in Wilkes County. And it was a very popular store. It was kind of a hangout. And uh, I asked him one day, I said, you know, you're in here a lot. I said, tell me about you. And I looked at him. I said, have you ever been saved? He said, wait a minute. I keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. I said, wow. That's wonderful. Amen. I'm so glad. Can I shake your hand? He shook his hand. And it wasn't two minutes he took God's name in vain. I said, now wait a minute, come here. I mean, an older guy. And I said, now wait a minute. You just took the Lord's name in vain. And you said you kept the commandments. How could that be? Because one of the commandments, and in fact, yeah. if we read the commandments, what does it say? That's right. And he said, well, you know, he all slip and slide occasionally. <laughs> But he just got through telling me he kept the commandments yeah. and that was going to be his salvation. Yeah. You see, people are confused as a termite in a yo-yo. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Yeah. Their heads are spinning and salvation is so simple. Yes, Amen. But the people are ignorant of salvation. They're depending on works or keeping the law or some other means of righteousness and they will be without excuse right. when they stand before God and they give an account of what they have done with the gospel. Amen. No, no, no excuses. Can I tell you, Jesus Christ is righteousness to all who believe. Amen. And by the way, He is the only righteousness. He is God's righteousness. Yes. That's question number eight. Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, notice in verses five through seven, the capitulation of the sin. Righteousness of the law is not reachable. It's not for me to reach it. It's not for you to reach it. Notice what verse 5 says. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Now let me just say this plainly. Only one man who ever lived was able to obtain the Amen. righteousness of the law. Amen. And it wasn't Moses. Amen. His name, 
is Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 5, 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's right. And that's what he did. God declares that sinful man can never obtain righteousness sure. through the law. Deuteronomy 27 verse 26 says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say Amen. Galatians 3.10 For as many are as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. I want to be honest with you. We're all under the curse. Man. Because none of us could keep the law. As much as I love my little granddaughter, she got in trouble today. I was <coughs> And uh, we had, we've had this plan. And bless my wife's heart, she does not have a green thumb. In fact, I think that if she had, if she, she just can't, she, she's the best plant killer. I mean, I mean, I mean, they just die. I mean, they do. And we've had this plant ever since my mom passed away. And that thing, the leaves, and, and the leaves just die on it. And, and she said, I don't know what. I said, I know what you're doing to it. You're killing it. <laughs> she said, I don't know what I'm doing to it. I said, I do. I've never said that out loud. <laughs> and if that gets back to her, I'll kill you, Courtney. But uh, today, my little granddaughter was standing over, and she was around the side of the couch, and she was doing something. Uh, I don't know hardly how to describe it to where some of you could understand it, but it wasn't pleasant. She was making funny faces as she was standing there. But I, I knew what was going on, Brother Tony, and uh, I, I looked around the corner, and she had this guilty look on her face. And I looked down at that plant that my wife had almost already killed. And that thing had two, I mean, it's this long, tall plant, and it just had two big leaves on it. <laughs> and my little granddaughter was sitting there concentrating, and she was, you know, I heard a click and a click. <laughs> <laughs> and then leaves was laying down in that pot. And here this big old long stem was, she was standing there with a little bit of, I didn't do it, Grandpa, look on her face. Did I hear music in the background? <laughs> Hearing by the I almost thought that that that, 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 that <laughs> I thought I was hearing a heavenly choir. <laughs> Woo! And she looked at, she's a little angel anyway. I thought I was hearing angels. Yes, sure. But she looked up at me. <laughs> I've got to discipline this child. I've just got to straighten her out on this. Now I said, now honey, you know you've done wrong. She said. Yeah. I said, you took and you broke your grandma. Well, your grandma was already killed it, but I wasn't too hard on her. She looked up at me and she was about to cry. And I said, Karis, I said, I want you to know something. You've done something very wrong. You should not have done that because that did not belong to you. And with tears in her eyes, she never did cry. But she was right at the point. But I said, but, but Pop loves you anyway. Amen. It was Nana's plant. And I said, but I want you to promise me that you'll never do it again. Yes, pop, pop. <laughs> but you know, she did something was wrong. She did something wrong and she knew it. Sure. She knew she was doing wrong when she did it. Amen. And she's not two years old. Now I'm talking about the same little girl that looked over at me when I was eating a, a bar and we hadn't blessed it and said, pop, pray. You see, they learn quickly. Yeah. They learn quickly. I'm telling you, even as much as I love her, there is none righteous. No, not one. Because it's in her very nature. And it's in your nature too. Amen. You say, I'd have beaten her half to death. Well, why? Amen. You might have, but that's my granddaughter. Keep your hands up. Amen. Amen. She said she'd not do it no more, and she won't. Amen. If she does it again, I will talk to her a little bit swifter. Amen. No more leaves to pull. Huh? No more leaves to pull. No more. Well, I don't have to worry about that plant. Thank God. That thing's dead. 
No, they a little life left in it. We're praying that it'll be I've not said anything to my wife about it yet. Hopefully she'll just think they just fell off. Like all the others did. Amen. Good time to play. Amen. Ain't we having a good time? Amen. But you know, sinful man can sure. never obtain the righteousness right. through the law. That's right. Because we break the law. Mm -hmm. Every day. Every day. I'm sure. glad you said that. We sin. I mean, we do. Even after salvation, we still sure. sin. We've got a problem. And you know what the problem is? It's flesh. Yeah, right. It's flesh because we're standing there beside of that plant that looks really like a lot of fun to click them leaves off of it and, and we just want to do it and we're there and we go ahead and click them leaves off. You know? And then we're in trouble. Righteousness of man is not reachable. Amen. No, it's not. Romans 6 and 7. Notice what the Bible says. But the righteousness which is of faith speaking on, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart... Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring down Christ, Christ down from above. Verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. If man could obtain righteousness on his own merit, there would have been no need for Jesus to come and die and resurrect in order to give us what we could not attain. Amen. There would be no reason for it if we could obtain it. But see, we can't. So we need to understand that. Mm -hmm. There's not a person. And I'm telling you, as you think about this, this is good soul winning material right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to show people this. Say, look here. If, 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 if we could make it on our own in verse number 6 right. and 7, it teaches us that if there was a good enough in me and that I could keep the law, there would be no purpose in God giving His only begotten Son who died for yeah. us. There'd be no purpose in Him coming. There'd be no purpose in Him giving His life if you and I could live it. But we can't. Therefore, we need a redeemer. We need a Savior. I love this Scripture. Titus chapter number 3 and verse 3, 4, and 5 and 6 says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful, and hating one another, but after the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, Amen. our Savior. Amen. Notice the closeness of salvation. Verse number 8. I love this part. Notice it's close. It's on our lips. But what saith it? Verse 8, Romans 10. The word is, is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Many in Paul's day were discussing what Paul was preaching. Yes, sir. But very few moved by faith to receive his words. And I'm telling you it's the same way today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You stand up and you preach on Sunday morning until you turn five different shades. Amen? Of color. Until you're red in the face when you're preaching. If you're light complected like I am, Brother James, you can preach until you, uh, you, you're you exhausted. And you can preach until, until your blood pressure goes through the roof. And many people just look at you and stare and say, well, you know, that's not for me. Preach to a group of lost people and they reject the message that God gives. But the Word is nigh unto them. In today's society, it is even harder to get people to even discuss the gospel, yeah. much less accept it and believe it. See, we're living in those last days of the falling away. And I believe we're close to that. Uh, it's on our lips. It's an outward manifestation, confession and belief, manward look. Notice in verse number 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, maybe you'll be saved. No. Hmm? What does it say? Thou shalt be saved. So there must be a conviction that Jesus Christ came to save sinful men by His death, burial, and resurrection. Is that right? Yeah. I hope you believe that. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Notice this. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now you've heard that preached all your life. Haven't you? Why is outward confession important? You ever thought about it? Why do, we, why do we ask people to come up there? And it puts them in such a bind. I mean, it does. It really does. Because a lot of times people are shy and backward and bashful. They've never stood before a crowd of people before. But why is an outward profession important? The reason for an outward profession is this. It is the fact that it shows our willingness to humble ourselves and be stripped of our pride in acknowledging that we needed a Savior. Amen. Are you listening? Right. That's part of it. Yes, sir. I believe that's just as Bible, as much Bible as the previous verse that says, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Under the law, everything was established by at least two witnesses. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. There's your two witnesses. Amen. You got to have those two witnesses. Amen. I want to tell you, glory to God, come here and, and run with me a little bit, would you? I feel like running tonight. Would you just, would, you want to run tonight? Glory to God. Hey, let me just say it this way. What happened on the inside of me when the Lord hey, saved me, right. worked its way all the way up from right here, and it come out of my mouth. He saved my soul. Glory right. to God. Yeah, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Yeah. So here we see the inward possession and the outward profession. The two witnesses are in agreement. And that's question 14 and 15. So notice that. Now let me give you a uh, look down in verse 11. We're about halfway through the lesson. Got eight minutes to go. Amen. I've not run any rabbits tonight. Me and Courtney, amen. Thank God. The approach of the gospel in verse 11 through 13. The gospel is offered to all. I love this verse. Verse number 11 says, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Huh. Those who put their faith and trust in Jesus are not ashamed to be identified with Him. Amen. Let me just say it this way. There is no such thing as a secret disciple. Right. Amen. <laughs> well, I'm just, gonna, I'm just not going to tell nobody. Well, the Lord saved me, but I'm not going to tell it. And I'm just going to live my life in the shadow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be... I don't believe that. No. I don't believe that. Because when He comes into you... Brother Cleary, can, can, can I put you in a classification Go ahead. as a loudmouth Baptist preacher? <laughs> can I put you in that class? Amen. I thought so. Can you imagine not being able to tell it? Right. Could you imagine how miserable you would be to be what you are right now, but to think that you wouldn't claim the name of Jesus to anybody. Huh? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be awful? How would you feel? Would, would you want to live that way? I can't imagine anybody who's saved, Brother Baidu, who knows the Lord Jesus and that wants to be ashamed of Him. Right. Amen. Think about it. What did He do for us? He gave Himself for us. Right. He died for us. He paid our sin debt. He saved us from our sins. He's taking us to heaven. He's going to give us a mansion, eternal life, forgiveness of sins. Oh yes, for all sin forever. Amen. Amen. I thank God for that. How could you deny somebody that loves you that much? Amen. Amen. How could you deny Him? That because, but a lot of people, you know, they say, well, you know, I, I'm really just a secret hogwash. Hogwash. Man, you didn't go to the same well I went to. I know, I <laughs> There's water in the well where I went. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, you must have went to one of those dry wells. Amen. <laughs> hey, man. Be careful. I want to preach last night's message again. Uh, Isaiah 49, 23. I'm not going to read it. Ain't got time. All who call will not be turned away. Look in verse number 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is over all, is rich unto all that call upon Him. I love that verse, don't you? By the way, the same Lord is over all. 
<laughs> Saved and lost. Amen. 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 The, the Lord is over all the Hillary Clinton supporters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Trump. And He's also over all the Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. And He's all over all the rest of the people. Yeah. Now, I don't care who you support. It doesn't matter. But God is over all. Yeah. And He is. Notice the gospel is offered to all and all who will believe can be saved. That's right. There is no such thing as limited atonement. Right. Hmm? You believe that? Amen. Oh yes, that's the truth. All who call on Him will not be abandoned. Now I believe that. Verse number 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall, shall be saved. I'm glad we're a whosoever gospel. God wants all men. You know what? He's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come. All. 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 He's willing that Mexicans be saved. Did you know that? Yeah. He's willing that Canadians could be saved. He's willing that Ghanese people could be saved. He's willing... That all the people in South America could be saved. The people in India. He's willing to save them all. He's willing to save those in Japan and the Philippines. He's willing to save those in Russia and China. I'm glad, thank God, He even wants to save those that are in Australia. I'm thankful for that. He even wants to save those in a place called Caltag, Alaska. Amen. Where Brother Robert and Sister Lottie are tonight. Right. By the way, please pray for them. Yes, amen. Amen. Pray for them. Yes. They've had a trying time since they got there. Every water pipe in the church and in their apartment was broken mm -hmm. because the house was not winterized and everything froze. Mm -hmm. Hot water was out. Could you imagine that? What well, wouldn't be no problem? All you have to do is go down to Lowe's Hardware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 400 miles away. <laughs> and you have to fly it in. Right. No problem. But they've struggled. They've struggled. And you know what that is? Nothing but the devil fighting. But right. did you know that God will save whosoever will? It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. God wants to save you. I'm glad of that. Right. Second Peter, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Notice in verse 14 and 15, God has a four-step plan of how He offers the gospel in reverse. Notice the progression. In verse 14, it says this, How shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in, whom, in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Notice in verse 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them have preached the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things Thanks. there's a message right there about beautiful feet I'd like to preach that sometime amen <laughs> there's a good message but notice they, they were called number one because they had not believed they believed because they, were, they heard they heard because there was a preacher and they preached because they were sent you see God sent them right God is looking for those who are willing to say, as Isaiah said, Then said I, Here am I, send me. That's why Robert Anderson's in Caltech, Alaska. There's people in this church question, Does he really belong there? Is, is, but you know what? If God called him to go there, who am I to say, Robert? You ain't got no business there. Robert, go. If God's called you, go. Brother Harville, if God calls you to go to Caltech, go to Caltech. If God calls you to go to Honolulu, let me know and I want to be your sister. <laughs> Amen. Woo. I can see them little flowery little things around our necks now. I like that idea. But you know, notice this. The animosity of the gospel in verse number 16. Why had the Jews not been saved? It is because that God, is it because of God electing some men to go to hell and some to go? No, absolutely not. Definitely not. Romans 16, 10, 16 says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. Now Paul is quoting Isaiah. He goes back to the Old Testament book of Isaiah 53, verse number 1. This is a book that the Jews should have known, and Isaiah finishes the chapter explaining what kind of report it was. It was a report of a suffering Savior. 
Notice the source of faith in verse 17. So then faith come up by hearing, and hearing by what? <laughs> notice the word report. And I want to say this, notice this, in verse number 16. You see that word? Who hath believed our report? And I, I, I said it's not important to study words. I don't mean it that way. It is important. You don't have to be a, a scholar. But I would encourage you to study words. Because the same word, the word report in verse 16 is the same word as hearing in verse 17. The report of the message was heard, so it is not just hearing, but the hearing of the Word of God. There's where we get the report. Right. Amen. It, it's when the Word of God goes out. Right. Notice verse 18, 19, and 20. We see, and Paul expected a setback. That, by the way, don't, don't expect everything to just go... Just like that. The devil's going to fight you. Yeah. The devil fought Paul. Did he, did, what happened to Paul in the end? Does anybody remember? Fought beasts in Ephesus. Huh? Fought beasts in Ephesus. Huh? Stoned. Listen. Listen. He was <coughs> asked into the sea. Night and day of the deep. Everywhere he went, he faced persecution. And we think everything's got to be a bed of roses. Yeah. And when, when we have our little tribulation. I want to say this, and I can talk about Baptist preachers because, as Brother Tony Malay says, I are one. I like it. <laughs> I are one. That's me. You know what we do? We get over in the corner. We have us a little pity party. We think nobody loves us. Praise God. I think I'm just going to throw in the towel. I think I'm just going to walk away from it all. Lord, if you don't love me enough to, to keep this off of me. You know? Yeah. Every ministry is going to go through some valleys. Right. And if you're not going through something ever, there's something bad and wrong. Right. Yeah. Because you're not being opposed. Paul's ending days was in prison yeah. in Rome right. for a period of years. And then he was brought and beheaded. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. He had opposition. Yeah. Notice in verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Oh, Yes, verily, have you heard? Their sound went unto all the earth, and there are words unto the end of the world. But did I, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked me, that asked not after me. You see. There was a protest because not everybody heard. Paul uses the language, and I would love to turn back there about Psalms 19. Have you ever read Psalms 19? You need to. Before you go to bed tonight, why don't you just take a few minutes and read Psalms 19, and you'll just shout the victory because we have a good God. Amen. But not everybody had heard, and he uses this language to remind them of the testimony of the heaven and the stars that cry out to the Creator. Yeah. The protest. Paul knew about the protest. He did they really know? Moses predicted their rejection in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 21, some 1,500 years before Paul wrote these words. The Bible says that they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy to those which are not a people. Right. Paul knew the protest. It was too hard to grasp. He quotes again Isaiah 10, 21 and 65, 1 to show that God manifests Himself to those who want to know Him. If a person wants to find God, God will reveal Himself. I'd love to read those verses, but I don't have time. Let me give you the last, last question. Verse number 21. The sedition of faith. God is constantly calling. Verse 21, But to Israel He saith. Listen to this. This is good. All day long, I've stretched forth my hands mm -hmm. unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. God said every day, every day, I've looked down at you and I've pleaded with you. Yeah. I, I begged you. I begged you. I, I've stretched forth my hands and I, I've said to you, come to me, come to me. Boy, that'll preach. I never had seen that before till tonight, Brother Arvel, but notice that. He says, all day long, there's, there's, a, there's a, a tendency of non-ceasing in this. He didn't take a break. It was a continual process. He was standing there with his arms open. 
And he was saying to them, Come. You remember when the Lord Jesus was there and He was looking over the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He yeah. said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And he used the analogy of a mother hen and her chicks. Oh, oh how I would have longed to and how I would have brought you under my wings. You see, that's what God could do for America. Uh -huh. And that's what God longs to do for our churches. Amen. But we have gotten away from what real worship is. And I want to say this tonight in closing. The gospel is in, within reach of every man and the only reason tonight that men are without Christ and without God, without righteousness and will spend eternity in hell forever is because they refuse to submit to God. And there's never been a greater statement than whoever wrote that statement. And that is the truth tonight. Jesus is willing to save. God the Father is willing to allow Him to be Amen. saved. The Holy Spirit is working to save sinners. And men will not be saved. They will die lost in their sins and go to a devil's hell because they refuse to humble themselves, get the pride out of their life, and submit unto God. And that's where we're at, even today. Pride and an unwilling, unsubmissive spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what leads people to a place called hell. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank You for Your Word. Lord, we thank You for such a great chapter in the Word of God. Father, we thank You, Lord, tonight for Your sweet spirit. Lord, that we have enjoyed tonight. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your class here this evening and Lord, those that are watching and listening, Lord, through the means of the internet or whatever method they may be uh, looking at this through a DVD or whatever. But Lord, we pray tonight something was said that would point someone to Jesus. Father, if there's a lost person listening tonight, Lord, I pray that You'd speak to their heart. Oh, dear God, Lord, I love what Paul said in the first verse. Lord, I hope that it's not wrong if I read it again. But he said this in verse number 1 of Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer, for, for, uh, prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Yes. Lord, it is also my prayer. Lord, tonight. Lord, for this county. Lord, for our community. Lord, for our state. Lord, for our nation. Lord, for this world, Lord, there's enough gospel in this one chapter alone. Lord, for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl upon the face of the earth to hear a clear presentation of what it means to be saved. Father, we thank You for the Word of God tonight. Thank You for Romans chapter 10. Lord, I pray that these students, Lord, would sharpen their soul-winning ability. Lord, they would be able to take these verses now and, Lord, and rightly divide them even better than before. And, Father, even me, God, help me, Lord, to be a better soul winner. And what you do, we're going to give you praise, honor, and glory. And we thank you tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. May the Lord bless